A couple weeks ago, Konami saw fit to summon forth Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, TCG, and other Yu-Gi-Oh! and anime-related YouTubers and streamers to celebrate the third anniversary of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, something that is to be celebrated by all of us. But while there, I had a very special moment and an amazing time, and this is that story. YT Dan Duel Links is brought to you by dank duelists like you. Become a YouTube member to never miss. What's going on my boys? YT Dan back again with another Duel Links video. And this video is different because I'm taking you guys outside of my room. I'm actually in the living room right now. I normally don't have you guys anywhere else in my entire space that I'm living except for the gaming room, the dueling room, where it's all going down. And the reason why I brought you guys out of the room is because I want to talk to you guys about something very special, about the event that happened with me and with everybody in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links anime TCG community. It's just so much stuff went on and I really feel like it's worth talking about, so I want to jump into it. So the first thing I want to say is thank you guys so much for helping me get 30,000 subscribers. You know, it's been a long time and I was super grateful to receive it. And thanks everyone for subscribing, becoming members, whatever. Everything that helped to contribute to that. Just even watching, hitting the like button, sharing the video, talking about content, all that stuff helped to get to the 30,000 subscriber uh, point. And I would definitely say thank you guys so much for that. I actually took a look into my email spam and found the invitation for Konami's events for me to come to this event. I found out that the Konami officials and the people who were running the PR team actually knew who I was, was surprised that I wasn't involved in the events last year, and also was like, man, we'd love to see you in future stuff. So. It for me, that was just like a shocking, mind blowing moment because I had no idea that I was valued like that within Konami or within the corporate Yu Gi Oh organization. I had no idea that people were expecting me to be places. Um, I was literally asked by a Konami official, Why didn't you come to Worlds? And I basically was like, Because I didn't get the invite. And they was like, Dude, we sent you an invite and the invite was sitting in the spam. So I felt like the ultimate scrub because of that, number one. But number two, I felt so grateful that I was even invited in the first place. So let's just talk a little bit more about what else happened there. Because while we were there, it was absolutely crazy. And with what everyone was expecting this thing to be and what it actually was, was a huge difference. So starting off, you know, I hop on the plane and I'm taking a plane from New York City all the way down to California. 
which is across country. So a lot of you guys were expecting other people to be there, like Duel Links Meta and others. I'm not really sure where Duel Links Meta and other folks live, but the situation was pretty different for those who could or could not attend. I mean, honestly, you have folks like Watt007 who couldn't attend because of his age, because of being held at a bar. And then you have people like Duel Links Meta who are bigger um, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links or Yu-Gi-Oh! community, uh, to just say the least. Um, who didn't show up for whatever reason. So everyone had their reasons why they did or didn't show up. It was also a self-funded event. So for most people who came there from the same distance I was coming, for example, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, um, who Dylan, who was also there, was coming from New Jersey area. So New York, New Jersey, similar area, definitely on the more expensive side for airline tickets. So it was a very expensive weekend for guys like us, but for me, it was 100% worth it. So as we're going to this event and I'm getting my mind right, I'm getting into this headspace, I'm preparing myself to duel. So since it was a tournament and celebration, I didn't know if they were gonna let me play with my own decks, but if they did, I was prepared to never miss. You can guarantee that. But also, um, the crazy thing was, I knew if they had us build our own decks, it probably would be something from the dark side of dimension or regular packs. So 100% going in, I was hoping that they had at least Thunder Dragons, and if they didn't have Thunder Dragons, they had Dark Magicians, and I was gonna rock that. But when I got there to the actual hotel and got to meet the guy that was actually putting this together, uh, the third party officials that was putting this together for Konami, he let me know off rip, straight off the back, that I would not be participating in the duels. And he let me know this off rip because he could tell that the fire was ready. He could tell that your boy was burning with desire to throw down some face downs with some of the most legendary duelists of all time and potentially others from the anime or wherever other communities that these people were gonna be coming from. So I was a little disappointed, but they, he did assure me, he said, listen, you know, there's two people who might not show up. That was Octopimp and Yummy Bakura. And because Octopimp and Yummy Bakura had not shown up yet, I was gonna have a chance to duel potentially, and I really, really wanted that chance. But it was not in the cards for your boy. Now, funny enough, there was a bit of, um, there was a bit of a, 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 a hype. There was a bit of a, a momentum being built up online for seeing me actually sit down and dueling at this tournament. Folks online were talking about it on Twitter, talking about it on my channel, talking about it on Instagram, talking about anywhere they could talk about it, even on Twitch, was asking where is YT Dan and why is he not dueling? And the crazy thing was, I didn't say anything to my fans because I, number one, didn't want to disappoint them. But number two, I was holding out that I could take Octopimp's place or Yummy Bakura. So as we were waiting, Octopimp eventually showed up and he showed up kind of just in time. So when Octopimp showed up, I knew that I wouldn't be able to take his spot. Yummy Bakura had not been there yet. And when Yummy Bakura showed up, the matches had already gotten started. So the crazy thing was, you know, though I was at this point 100% for sure, knew I wasn't gonna play. I just basically said, forget it. And I started just having fun. So I got time to hang out with my boys, uh, Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and his girlfriend, which was absolutely amazing. They were two amazing people. I, I really had so much fun hanging out with them. And then I also got to hang out with my boy, Suffer Ketchum, AKA Ricardo. He is the man. Um, I don't know if you guys realize or understand this, but Back when I had the first vision for my YT Dan channel, for what I wanted to be, what I wanted to look like, my boy Ricardo came through and we just had this synergy, this vibe, this connection, so that the type of content that I was creating really matched the type of art that he was creating as well. And we got to come together and do an awesome collaboration. And honestly, I will have to attribute a lot of my success and some of the even most entertaining and most beautiful parts of my channel or my videos to my boy Suffer Ketchum. And it was so great that, you know, because he lives in LA, I got the opportunity to have a plus one at this party. So I got to turn around and bring my boy on too. So I thought that that was pretty cool. I got to share this experience with him. He definitely enjoyed it and loved it. We had a, so much fun. We got to just kick it and hang out with one another. And we just had an excellent time. It was my first time meeting him in person. It was fantastic. So we were just actually chilling at the bar, 
just kicking it, not doing anything. I forgot to mention that I did get a chance to meet your boys, uh, DZ and Nim Nim. And not to throw those guys to the side by far by any means. I have never met Dazeev and Nim Nim ever in person. We've only just randomly talked here and there on YouTube. But actually meeting those guys in person was absolutely insane because talking to them was so, it was so funny. It was just so uh, enlightening just to have an opportunity to talk to people, not only from the TCG side, uh of the game but to also talk to people that you have never you know really met in real life these these Yu-Gi-Oh celebrities which is what people keep calling us but i still kind of don't feel like a celebrity but in some ways yes i get it celebrities all right all right i'm saying it but but again out here meeting these Yu-Gi-Oh celebrities was definitely crazy and while i'm on this side rant i also got to meet and spend out spend some time with your boy simply unlucky and Sam from Team Samurai, and it was absolutely insane. I didn't get to talk to Simply Unlucky as much as I wanted to, but honestly, of all the people in the room, Simply Unlucky was definitely the one that I was more starstruck by by anyone else. When he walked in the room, it was funny because I didn't really see him, but when I heard his voice at the hotel, I instantly knew that it was Simply Unlucky, and because I knew it was him, I did think, oh my God, it is simply unlucky. The man, the myth, the legend, the only one out here actually, I don't know, like making the making the dream come true. Simply unlucky is like the guy that I do really truly look up to because he is, he's he's doing it, man. Simply unlucky is doing it. Uh man, this simply unlucky is the greatest. But anyway, passing, getting past that. It was just more hanging out, me just hanging out who was ever was hanging out, I could hang out with. But then I got a chance to see Yummy Bakura for the first time, meet her in person and talk to her, which is pretty cool. And I walked up and we got to have an initial conversation and the conversation was kind of crazy because Yummy even actually offered me to take her spot in the tournament, which I thought was really gracious of her. And also, um, because she offered me the spot in the tournament, I think the only reason that I couldn't even actually take the seat is because they had already invested so much in the assets for the actual tournament. Taking her name off and putting my name just wouldn't have made uh, a good good switch. And they would only have to do that if they were really pressed to in the beginning by someone not showing up. But it just was what it was. So Yummy Bakura actually played. I got a chance to talk to her. I asked her what she was gonna play. She told me she didn't know what she wanted to play. And basically I was like, just go ahead and pick the deck that you feel that you know the best. Pick that deck. That's the one you should go with. Plus you can't go wrong with Dark Magician. It's got two treacherous trap holes. That is a pretty sweet deal for this tournament. So the tournament commences and everything's going on and I'm just kicking it with the homies. I'm opening up my mat. I'm talking to boys. I'm getting the drinks in. I'm just having that great conversation. Networking with the guy who actually made the drinks at the Scum and Villainy uh, bar. He told me that Konami reached out to him to him directly and was like, hey, we need you to make us three drinks. One needs to be green, one needs to be purple, and one needs to be blue. And basically he said that was the only criteria, so it was up to him to find out and discover the perfect combination to make these drinks. And he also let me know that a drink encyclopedia will be coming out for this actual bar. So you can actually use these recipes to uh, make these drinks yourself and uh, soon that book will be out. I don't know. He did offer me to come and do an exclusive taping on how to make the drinks, but I don't live in LA, so I didn't get a chance to take advantage of that. So, oof. So the time is going on and Yummy Bakura is playing. And I guess, you know, and the crazy thing was that same Konami official also told me that I wouldn't be able to play, which everybody just really seemed to really, either they knew that I really wanted to play or they were seeing people's reactions from the live stream that I wanted to play. And the reactions for this live stream was just absolutely insane. At first they were just going nuts and they were trolling and then they were getting into it and they were going back and forth. But when I actually was sitting there just watching it, having some drinks with my boy Ricardo, it just was kind of just like, oh, okay, it just is what it is. I'm not gonna be able to duel, forget it. But then a Konami official walked over to me and said, Dan, are you ready 
to go on the stream live and commentate the penultimate duel. I said, what? He said, are you ready to go on stream live to commentate the penultimate duel? Well, I was ready, my boy, so I super equipped the never miss, and I was ready to go. So I go out there, and we're getting ready to stream the penultimate duel. And I sit down next to Olivia May. Now, at the time, I didn't know Olivia May was a famous video game announcer, but Olivia May is. She's a famous video game announcer. And sitting with Olivia May was definitely an interesting experience because we was definitely vibing in that moment. And you can definitely check out that entire moment that we had together. Ooh, it's the classic Dark Magician. Extra Ooh, spicy. Look good. at it. Respect the drip. Respect the drip on the Dark Magician, please. Respect the drip, Karen. Yes, yes, yes Karen. <laughs> Respect the drip. <laughs> Looks like Yami Bakura never missed. Mm. Not spicy right there. <laughs> but it was an incredible stream. And I wouldn't, I would tell you to check that out. I do have it listed on the iCard somewhere so you can take a look at it. But it was an incredible stream. The stream that first started, they were trolling as always. But when I stepped on, someone said, oh shit, it's the legendary duelist YT Dan. And everybody started quoting out the never miss. Everybody start going out with their hazy beats. Everybody was representing in the chat. And I wanna thank you boys for coming out into the chat and everybody who participated in that because I'm gonna tell you something that I didn't realize until I got back to the hotel and watched that moment over. There's been so much time of me making content and doing things on YouTube and making mistakes and just being myself and just not feeling like I'm doing the best or, or am the best or whatever. But to see everyone's reaction when I jumped on the stream, how everybody just started screaming out the never miss, start shouting out your boy, man. It was a moment that I cannot compare with anything else in my life. There was a, uh, a, a rush of joy and, uh, acceptance and uh i don't know it's a beautiful moment for me to to be known for and acknowledged for you know in that moment for something that i love and care about so much and for the konami people and the Yu -Gi -Oh! tcg people and dylan from Yu -Gi -Oh! everything and just all these different Yu -Gi -Oh! people saying like oh my god it's yt dan i want to talk to this guy i want to be around this guy I've never felt so appreciated in my life. And I want to thank you guys for that. That's a moment that you guys didn't know that I needed. But damn, it was a moment that came right on time, man. But uh, back to the rest of it. So I get to do the commentary. It was hilarious. Then Yummy Bakuria gets on there. And we're all doing the commentary together. Now, I didn't know Olivia May was going to ask the question. Did, like, ask, ask Yummy Bakuria the question, you know, did Dan help advise you? Is that true? And she asked it live on the stream. And it was true, but I didn't know what Yummy Bakura was going to say. I didn't even know if Yummy Bakura even remembered that exchange because it was very quick exchange before we went to the, uh, to, before she had to actually go play because she pretty much ran in the door, said hello, shook hands, grabbed her stuff, and went to go play because she had arrived just in time to actually duel. And she said, yeah, Dan told me to go with what I know. And then they asked me, they asked me, do I have any more advice? And I finally got to say, I got to say it. I got to say it live on the stream, live official on a Konami stream for all you boys to see. I finally got to say it. I said, my advice would be for you to go forth and never miss. Okay, thank you. There you go. Olivia May says, was that helpful to you, Yummy Bakura? Does that help? And Yummy Bakura was like, I'll never miss. There you go. Never She's not miss. gonna miss. She's, gonna never She's not miss. gonna miss. I was losing my mind. I couldn't believe that she said it. The never miss powers was real, and it just felt it felt so good. I know, and it was kind of crazy because yes, it was her moment. Yes, it was everyone else's moment that was dueling. But god damn it, it felt like my moment from my perspective. I felt so happy. 
and validated that everybody was out here repping the nether mist in that brief like 10 minutes that i was actually on the stream and then afterwards yummy bakura goes on to win the entire tournament proving once and for all that if you believe you will never you never ever gonna miss and uh man i would have definitely rather dueled in the tournament but i feel like if i dueled that particular outcome would have never come to pass and I wouldn't have had the same experience. And I don't think I would feel as blessed as I do right now, because just to know that people are engaging with me and people love Yu-Gi-Oh! and they love what I do on that same level, they come out to support me outside of my channel, outside of my stream, they come to another place wanting me to be there and the people that are there want me to be there all for the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff that I do is a feeling that I cannot describe to you but goddamn it is the best feeling I've ever felt in the world and uh man I just I just don't even really know what to say at the end of the day it was a beautiful beautiful streaming event and I really enjoyed it I had so much fun for all the reasons that I described before, but all those personal reasons too. But then at the end, I got to leave with the greatest gift of all. You know, Konami was giving out goodie boxes and goodie bags of all this stuff that everybody was getting, and it was great. But I came with a goal in mind. I didn't know when the next time I'd be coming out to one of these events, and I didn't know who all I would meet there. But I knew that if they came, I wanted them to sign some cards for me. So I brought some cards and I had the boys look through the cards and sign off random cards that they just identify with that they liked in this pile that I had. And it was mostly Duel Links cards. And I put these cards out and everybody signed them from the bartender, Dylan, DZ, everybody signed them as many as I could. Um, and it was just a wonderful experience and of everything that happened at that event That's another thing for me. That's truly special. That's 100% all my own. That's just Great, so that was it. That's the full story. That's everything that happened at the Yu-Gi-Oh! third anniversary uh, Event and damn I would love to go to the next one and I'm glad that Konami invited me to this one. So my boys, let me know what's going on with y'all. Let me know how y'all out here never missing. And I will be back in another video, my boys. But as always, keep it dang.